Today, I want to answer a question that we got from a viewer a couple weeks ago. She said, I tried to send a photo to my doctor's portal, but it was rejected because it was too large. How do I make it smaller? Well, there's lots of ways. And if you Google for resizing photos, you'll see software like Irfan View and GIMP and Photoshop Express. I want to give you just what I consider the simplest methods to do that. If your photo is on Windows, then I say use the built-in Photos app that comes with Windows. It can resize. If you're on an iPhone or a Mac, just email the picture to yourself. That will resize it. And if your photo is in the cloud, like with Google Photos or with Amazon, then you can download it the wrong way. I'll show you what I mean by that. First, for on my Windows computer, I want to get the Photos app. It's just built in. It's called Photos. Then I find a photo that I want to resize. This one of me looking looking like I'm working on a picnic table in the, in the beautiful Florida forest. First, let's see what size it is. I click on the little eye for info, and it tells me that's 5.2 megabytes. Let's say that we need it to be less than one megabyte. Windows Photos can do that, no problem. You just click the three dots and then resize image. If you know exactly what you want, you can fill this in, or I'm going to just go with percentage and say make it 50% of what it was. And it tells us that the current size then was 5.2 megabytes, and this will now bring it under one megabyte at 885K. All I have to do is save it, and my new photo will be able to get uploaded to that portal. Next, what about an iPhone or a Mac? The simplest way to do that is to email it to yourself. Now, this is my iPhone. It doesn't matter whether I use Google Photos or Apple Photos to get the photo. What matters is that I email it with the Apple email. So I can open up Google Photos, find a picture. Now, oh, there's that same one. I just tap Share and share to. Now, not Gmail, that doesn't do it. You need to use the mail that comes with the phone or with your Mac computer. Email it to yourself and resizing. Now, when you tap send, look at this. It offers to downsize the photo to any one of these. If we want it less than 1.1, then we should go to medium. 167K will be good. Now you'll receive that in an email and you can send it on from there or download it to your computer. Lastly, let's go look at Google Photos. Let's say it's this cute little raccoon picture that we want to send. Let's first look at its current size, 5.5 megabytes. We'll talk about this MP later. It's the MB, the file size that I'm looking at. So that's way too big to send. And here, if I click the three dots and download, that is gonna download the five and a half megabyte file, which is normally what I recommend. That's the good way of downloading pictures from Google Photos. But since our intent is meant to resize and downsize it, then I'm going to just right click and save image as and call it raccoon. And when I click save, Notice it's telling me here that the raccoon has been downloaded to my computer at 321K. That's an incredible. You can see why normally that is the bad way to download because you're going to be losing a lot of quality. But for these purposes, that works so slick. Now, just because it has been reduced in size significantly doesn't mean that it's going to be too bad to see. Let's go get, let's go get that from the computer now. So I'm going to upload the raccoon, the downsized raccoon photo from my computer to
to Google Photos. Here it is. And it still looks just fine, even though it's only 300K in file size. So no, I would not be able to blow this up to a big photo on the wall. I can't zoom in very far, but it looks fine for looking at it on the computer. So those are three down and dirty ways. With Windows, use the built-in Photos app and resize. iPhone or Mac, email the photo to yourself. Google Photos, download the bad way. But now I need to explain a little bit more. You need to have the concepts of what are we talking about with file size versus pixel size. So the two measurements for photos are resolution, which is the number of pixels, and file size. So notice whenever you look at the info panel for a picture, you will see resolution measured in pixels and file size measured in megabytes or kilobytes. The pixels mean the little dots, the points of color that make up your picture. This particular picture has 4,032 pixels wide and 3,024 pixels high. If you multiply those, you come up with 12 million pixels or megapixels. Your camera might have settings. For example, my Samsung Note 9 is capable of taking a 12 megapixel photo, but I could have selected settings to make it less. I'd recommend not doing that. My iPhone 7, same thing, 12 megapixel. Now, if you have a, a digital SLR camera, you might have a lot more capability and make sure to check your settings that you're not using a low megapixel setting. So lots of megapixels means high photo quality. Few megapixels means low photo quality like this one. And this is what's called being pixelated. There are very few pixels, so it looks blurry. Now, file size is different. File size is simply the amount of space your picture takes. So if you think of a file like a suitcase, and these are all the clothes I want to take with me in my suitcase, I have poor packing skills. I would need this bigger suitcase to fit all these clothes. But if I let my husband Jim pack, he would be able to get it into a smaller suitcase. So that is file compression. So what is this Google Photos storage saver size? When you use Google Photos, you have the choice of uploading your photos in original size or storage saver. Original means original, all pixels, and does not add any file compression. Realize that you're paying for storage. You don't want to pay for more than you need. So Google has this feature called Storage Saver, which limits photos to 16 megapixels and adds file compression. For videos, it limits to 1080p. Now, if you're shooting a lot of 4K videos, you might not like this, but most photos with smartphones anyway are not more than 16 megapixels, so you do not lose any photo quality. It will reduce your file size anywhere from 20 to, I've seen it reduce it to 70%, so that will save you storage cost without reducing photo quality. As I say, unless your original was more than 16 megapixels or 4K videos. So it's just a better way of packing. No loss in pixels. Let me show you. So I have three copies of this particular photo. This first one is in original size, the second one is in storage saver, and the third one is uh, the result of using that bad download method, you know, the right click and save as rather than the three dots and download. So let's look at the pixels for these. I open this one and it says that this is a 12.2 megapixel, that 4032 by 3024. It has the full resolution of the original. I'm gonna zoom in on this spot of the picture and we can see that those are two kayaks with three people. This is the original photo. Now let's look at the one that is in storage saver. 
it is also 12.2 megapixels and I can zoom in and see the two kayaks and the three people. Now this one that is the result of the bad download method, the right click, if I try to zoom in, that's as far as it goes. That's where you can really tell the resolution. You cannot zoom in. That means you could not blow up to a big picture. This one is only 1.1 megapixels. And finally, can you upsize a low resolution photo? Well, yes, you can. I was quite surprised when I was playing with the Windows Photos resize command and I saw not only could I tell it to change the percentage by 50%, I could also do it to 200% and increase quality to 100%. And it gives me from a 320k original, it gave me 2.6. But don't expect the upsize photo to look as good as the original. It just can't do it. It's trying to figure out where the missing pixels were from, and it doesn't do that great a job. AI can do better. Try upscale.media if you ever have a low-resolution picture that needs to be better. I'm Chris Gould with Geeks on Tour, and this was Fun with Photos.